<laughs> Hello, all of you beautiful people around the world. My name is Ryan, aka Blackbeard TCG, and in today's video, we are going to be talking about Natsume's first place Little Zoro beatdown deck profile. This was in the championship preliminaries, I believe it was in Osaka. It had almost a thousand players, guys, almost a thousand players. And Zoro took first place and second place. I think in the top eight, I believe there was four Zoros. I could be wrong. I really want to see the breakdown of this event. I hope we get to see some more deck profiles that participate at this event as well. But in today's video, I want to talk about a little bit more about Zoro, why exactly he's seeing a lot more play. And then I want to talk about Natsume's deck tech, four copies of Edward Newgate. Before we get into all of that juicy stuff, guys, we are almost at a thousand subscribers. Oh my goodness. Thank you so much for your support. Every single last one of you. Honestly, it means a lot. If you guys can help me get to a thousand subscribers, oh my gosh, I'm, I'm so excited. I'm hoping to start doing live streams so we can do live discussions. We can do some matches on um, OPTCG Sim and all of those things. Once I hit a thousand subscribers, um, we're going to have giveaways, all that good stuff, guys. So please join my crew, become my Nakama, hop onto the Saber of Zebek, hit that subscribe button and hit that like button. Don't leave a comment yet because I will have a comment question at the end of the video. So now that we got all of that out of the way, let's go ahead and talk about Natsume's deck. Now... Why is everybody playing Zoro? Why did all of a sudden Sunny start getting sold out? The prices started going up. People are playing Zoro all of a sudden. What happened? Zoro was a set one deck that people got pop more. Uh, I'm getting so excited. I'm stumbling over my words, but I do this all in one take. <laughs> Zoro is one of those decks that got a lot more popular towards the end of set one. And then all of a sudden in set two, boom. Zoro is just completely shitting on everything. Why? Well, if you take a look at Eustace Kid. Yusuf's Kid was a deck that dominated OP01 as well as Red Green Trafalgar Law. Now, those were decks that really played a more control based play style until you kind of got to your win condition, being 7 or 8 drop Kid. Or if you're playing Red Green Law, you could also play the Kid version, but as well, you could play your 5 drop blocker, put in Zoro, Room Shambles, all of those things, right? So it was a more mid range to end game deck. Whereas Zoro is completely rushed. Now, with the release of OP02, Decks like Black Smoker Control, which I have a deck profile on my channel, has been seeing a lot more play, as well as the Impel Down package, be it in Blurple Croc, be it in Blue Croc, be it in, more importantly, Doflamingo, and for Vankov as well, those two leaders, they are able to have a lot better matchup against green. And so because of that, the amount of green players has also decreased. So the amount of, of green players decrease, amount of blue players go up, Hey, guess what? Zoro has a really, really good matchup against Blue. Well, the thing is with Doflamingo, obviously, if they're playing the version with a lot of blockers, it can get a little bit interesting. But we have Nico Robin for that, which I'll get into. But with that being said, um, it has the, the the reason why a lot of people are playing a lot more Zoro is because it has a lot of favorable matchups, right? This deck will do very well into Smoker. It will do very well into um, the Blue decks. It will do very well into Kaido. In fact, right now. Kaido, um, any Impel Down package deck, uh, be it Doflamingo or Ivankov, as well as Zoro, are probably the top three decks of the format, with Smoker Control being right there, right? And Smoker Control can hold its own against Zoro as well, because you're playing a whole bunch of one-drops, so of course, as well, they can go ahead and neg that, get their plus a thousand, all that stuff, have some fun shenanigans, but the overwhelming pressure of Little Zoro is so, like, it's just so oppressive that... Even when those decks want, are able to be enabled and have their own game plan, uh, because you are essentially playing a bunch of one drops, uh, Smoker can easily do that. Kaido can drop uh, King and things like that in order to blow up things on the field. You're just able to play another one, play another one, play another one. It's so annoying. And these things can all swing. So all of those reasons are why this deck right now is becoming so popular and so strong. So if we take a look at the list... There isn't really anything that really stands out other than the four white beard. And this is absolutely genius. Now, the reason why I think that the four white beard is amazing, if we take a look at the second place deck profile, they were also running white beard. Now, they were only running two. Now, somebody could argue is that the reason why he lost? Could he won? Who knows, right? Um, you guys can go ahead and watch the match and decide if white beard really was the end all be all. 
But regardless, these players are now playing Whitebeard and Zoro. And the question becomes, why would you play Whitebeard and Zoro, right? Zoro is a deck that wants to be so aggressive, go hard in the paint, be super aggressive, end the game fast. You either win fast or die fast, right? Why are you playing Edward Newgate? Simple, actually, which is crazy. And anybody that says, oh, yeah, I knew this from before, well, then... Why weren't you playing it? Because there's people that were playing Lil Zoro Beatdown and topping events, even winning events, and they weren't playing a single copy of Edward Newgate, and now we're seeing it pop in. So, as you guys know, on play, Edward Newgate will be able to give your leader 2,000 power until the start of your next turn, meaning it's good for offense and defense. Now, if you think about it, you're going to be playing extremely aggressive, you're going to have a lot of bodies on board, and now your opponent has to decide, right? This is the coin flip matchup that is Zoro. You have to decide to play his game and continue to swing at his face, or you have to control the board, because if you don't kill the things on the board, they are going to kill you because they'll always get pumped up by Zoro, right? So the game plan typically against Zoro a lot of people like to get rid of the characters on board and thus Zoro is effectively really healthy if they try to play his game plan well guess what as you get to the end game they're not really going to be able to get lethal on you because now you're going to be able to drop your Edward <laughs> new gates on them it's such a good card for the late game it allows Zoro to be a 7k swinger 8k swinger because you're going to attach a Dawn to him anyways of course, Edward Newgate can go ahead and deal with those annoying blockers as well. He's a card that is going to be a great out to any of the other big threats that are in the game. You know, you might be up against a Kuzan, for example. Well, now you have a character that can deal with Kuzan if you're going up against Black Control. It definitely gives this deck that is already so strong another way to deal with its matchups. Edward Newgate, it just makes so much sense, right? There isn't really any downside to playing four copies of it. And, of course, you could say, well, what if you see multiple copies after you mulligan or whatever, whatever. Okay, well, that's fair, right? Like, if you have two copies, then hopefully you can somehow play it out and get it on board. Um, at some point, like, you're not going to lose before you can at least play one of them. So it's definitely still winnable, right? And at the end of the day, it's a card game. It's RNG. You're going to draw well sometimes. You're going to draw poorly sometimes. But the card's upsides are simply too strong to not play it like now when you actually play this build when you see how it feels it it's just a no-brainer it's just such a good card and again congratulations to natsume uh for putting together this build and performing extremely well i can imagine with a thousand players i don't know how many rounds it was but to have the mental fortitude to go through all of those matches Ah, man, I'm so excited. Zoro looks so strong. Zoro looks so strong. Make sure you guys check out my previous video if you haven't already as well. Talking about the new promos uh, pack that we're going to be getting for participation. Make sure you guys get your hands on those Gordons. Make sure you get your hands on those Sunnies. Um, because if you're planning on playing this build when OPO2 comes out, you are going to want to have those. I know for a fact I want them, so I will make sure I have a play set of each. Also, I'm a little bit worried because as you guys know, Zoro was actually a deck I was thinking of playing in OPO1. And now all of a sudden, he's being played a lot more in OPO2. He, a lot of people are already planning on playing him in OPO1 because it's like a North American fan base really love Zoro and all that stuff. So I feel like Rus Zoro could end up being pretty expensive, especially if you want to get a play set of alt arts. So I don't know, Zoro's going to be a little bit more expensive. I don't know, I'm thinking maybe I might have to join Kaido now. <laughs> because honestly, like I told you guys, my, my plan is I want to build a blue deck, right? And I want it to be max readied and all that stuff. But the first deck that I play, I want it to be cheap that I can go into events and just perform with and hopefully win some events and get some winner packs and get my winner Trafalgar Laws and all that. So if Zoro ends up being too expensive, I might just have to play Kaido. Um, I really want to play Zoro though. <laughs> but yeah, anyways, comment question of today's video. What are your thoughts on Zoro and OPO2? Do you think that this deck is too oppressive? Do you think that the meta will continue to develop and someone's going to figure out a new strategy to beat this? Or do you think that this deck will simply become tier zero to the point where everybody's just like, okay, I have to play Zoro because we can't play Zoro's game. And if Zoro plays his game, I just lose. Um, so do you guys think that that's what the meta is going to end up becoming? Again, we don't know what the numbers were like at this tournament to see what the percentage is of Zoro players. So I'm super excited. Hopefully those numbers come out soon. For me, I don't know. Again, once I see those numbers, I'll be able to determine. Maybe a couple more tournaments come out. We'll be able to see if a lot of more people are playing Zoro. And then we can decide if Zoro really is tier zero. But definitely Zoro is the best deck of OPO2.
the level one level one the rank one package is just way too broken um it's it's so strong right makino um open opens up the gates for everything to be played um bandit or whatever her name is uh she allows you to have an extra searcher the deck is just consistent it is very strong so let me know your thoughts in the comments below now let's go ahead and talk about the comment question of last video so in my last video i asked you guys what your thoughts are on the format being best of one and tom as br said i hope it eventually evolves into best of three i don't think best of one is good for the health of a guard game unless you're playing a card game where each set takes one hour i mean that's definitely an interesting take and you know it's hmm i could definitely see your point of view right of course obviously best of three is more ideal um i would love to see this game hopefully get a side deck um i feel like that would be really fun because then if that case if that's the case then i could definitely justify best of three of course with a side deck or else you wouldn't have a side deck if it's not best of three um but just because there's so many interesting event cards right and there's situational event cards where for example blue might have better matchups because they're able to play different events for specific matchups right and all of a sudden that might raise them up a tier um so I don't know. I feel like without a side deck, does it really need to be best of three? I don't think so. Um, the games will just take too long. Like, I, I honestly feel that. But who knows? With everybody playing Zoro now, <laughs> the games might be so quick. <laughs> so we will need a best of three. Uh, do I think that it evolves into a best of three? I don't know. I would disagree. But that's the beauty about this game. That's the beauty about my comment section and you guys. I love that we can have these discussions and we can have differences of opinion. Um, I definitely respect your opinion as well, Thomas. And I can understand why best of three would be better for the health of the game. I do agree with that point. You're 100% right on that. Uh, but for me, I just feel like, would I want to play through a tournament of BO3 for this game right now with no side decking? I don't know, it just feels like it just, it'll just drag on. Especially, maybe I'm biased because I'm a blue player, right? And sometimes blue matches can go long. Um, or if you're a red-green law player and, like, you really have to think about, like, your plays and stuff like that, games can go long. So, because of that, I'm a little bit on the fence. But with that being said, I appreciate your comment so much, Thomas. With that being said, guys, make sure you guys answer the comment question of the video that I mentioned earlier on so you guys have a chance to be in next video as well as join my crew if you haven't already. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button. Leave a comment. Share with a friend. We're almost at 1,000 subscribers. I love you all. And next week, Friday, we get the cards. Stay tuned for pack openings and all that stuff. I will catch you guys later. Peace.